Welcome to the presentation on the development of my teaching over the last two years. So my teaching portfolio over the last two years, I've been the convener of three modules. One is a first year module and this has been introduced newly in the last two years. I've been responsible for the whole module, all the assessment, um, the structure, the content, and also for embedding uh, employability with people from the careers development services. We have embedded the Leicester Award as a pilot school. Then another module is a second year module. I'm going to go over one of the projects in that module. So the, the project there was flipped classroom and it's on software architecture and system development. Um, finally another one, I've been teaching it for the third time now, uh, that's generative development for master students. And on, on other roles I've also been supervisor for <coughs> undergraduate group projects for final projects also for masters and undergraduates and there the the challenges are quite different because there it's about maybe more one-to-one -one guiding understanding student abilities and and how to how to guide them uh, and give the the right feedback to have a nice project outcome um, so the first project here I'm going to describe is the flipped classroom so it was basically the idea to adopt active learning where students work on challenging problems in class and it's also a flipped classroom approach where students got videos and materials to study before class and then in class they have worksheets have support by the teacher me the lecturer and teaching assistants to solve these problems and learn new concepts master new concepts so the reason why we decided to implement it for this module is that the ILOs of this module, they are quite high level in Bloom's taxonomy, so they start, or many of them, they, they are on the level of apply or even going up to create, where it's about constructing software architectures or demonstrating appropriate techniques for testing software. And um, flipped classroom and active learning, they have been applied and, and investigated in computer science before, so there's been some literature it also gave me a chance to apply cognitive load theory so this is um, yeah quite interesting to to manage the intrinsic load so I tried to use existing teaching materials for the flipped classroom but that basically didn't work because it had too much material and I had to reduce that to manage the intrinsic load um, then to manage the extraneous load I was creating different media formats videos written text. Some students I saw had their mobile phones with the videos while they were typing on the computers in the lab and in real time to follow my my small tutorials. This was quite a nice experience. What went well, the students were quite happy with the quality of the study material, so I got this from, from surveys uh, that I ran during the module execution and then also from the Loomis which ran afterwards. Um, students liked how it was quite comprehensive and really helped them to, to solve the problems in the exercises and the assessment. Um, many students appreciated to work at their own pace. This was, uh, I learned that from individual feedback and also the surveys. So this means that some students preferred to work on the provided material at home and then solve or study when they wanted to and, and solve the, the problems when they wanted to. And I gave them multiple levels of support that basically allowed them to do these things. Um, so they had lectures, they had lots of online materials for the flipped classroom. Then they had TA help during the computer labs. And I also prepared solution videos afterwards where I highlighted what we had observed. So after every lab I had a feedback session with the TAs where they told me then what were the challenges and then I put that in the solution videos. What needs improvement? So in the, the first time we tried this, this was a, um, a previous module, CO 2006, and their students found it too fast paced. So we basically prepared worksheets in the normal way we would prepare worksheets, but that doesn't really work well for flipped classroom because for flipped classroom students wanted the information of what exactly they have to do very accessible so that the time they spend in the lab this would be two hour sessions they could really use it to get started right away and then get help from teaching assistants when they get stuck uh, another thing that is a bit more concerning and, and more more work needs to be invested definitely that's the coursework basically fails to distinguish the good from the better students many students received high marks although the level of challenge was comparable to the module that this module replaced. The next project would be authentic open assessment design. In the authentic assessment the, the main idea is that students get a very realistic project to work on. Now 
my co 1101 module is for first semester first year so how can we give these students a very authentic problem and um, here the, the idea was to let them create a website in a group on the history of computing so they have to do some literature research they have to learn how to master the tools and in the end they have a product um, the idea of having this authentic and open assessment so the open one means that the students have a lot of freedom in choosing the kind of system so this also counters plagiarism there's some literature on plagiarism where it goes up to even 20 percent uh, there are other studies which which just report up to three percent i want to avoid plagiarism by giving maybe better uh, assignments to students and then this is also quite influenced by situated learning although some here this this work by ben ari they said that situated learning doesn't work well in computer science. I think for some modules like these more applied technical ones, it, it can work well. So what went well? Some students, they invest a lot of time and were very proud and competitive about their work. So learned that from meetings with the class, observations and discussions with individuals. Students were meeting early ch challenges, for example, of group work. This was in the first year module. And that's quite nice because this gives them really value beyond the classroom and also um, value for employability. Uh, what needs improvement? In the first iteration, students didn't completely understand the way how to interpret the rubrics. And after the marking had been done, they were a bit surprised. So now I, I introduced a session where we basically just went over some examples from the previous year and then marked them based on the marking criteria. So students were a bit more happy and, and understanding what's going on, why they received what marks afterwards. So one thing that needs improvement is the high workload of giving feedback. We have rubric marking and we also adopted the letter of feedback where you first give a clarification, then you value the work, then you criticize it and then you basically give the student a suggestion of how to improve the work and um, this requires a lot of effort. It's very nice. Hope we think it's very nice for the student as they see the justification, they see how to improve. But some colleagues, for example, they, they said um, this is taking too much time and you just give just one point of how to improve and then they can come back to you and, and ask for clarification. Um, I yeah have to see how to how to improve that. My uh, continued professional development review, the old plan was learn and apply active learning that's ongoing and it's implemented in, in one of the modules with a very, very strong focus on active learning and flipped classroom, then more engaging assignments. So I hope that uh, this authentic assessment really helps students to be more engaged. And that's also part of the observations that I had. More active learning in lectures, I'm working on that. That's actually my action research project that I'm going to describe in the report. So other changes based on this course on my, my teaching is first the assessment literacy and the transparency of the marking criteria, how important this is for the students and for working well together with the students. Then uh, the active learning in other universities where I've been before, um, the active learning basically didn't exist. It was more theory focused and what we do now here in, in class, this is stuff you would have to just learn at home by yourself. Then um, I'm also more aware of the role of formative assessment as part of the teaching. Now to the professional feedback and the next steps. So what I've learned from the teaching observations, they, they have kind of focused on the more interactive lectures, which is part of my action research. So that's why the observation doesn't go a lot into here. Um, but other things that I've learned from, from colleagues with discussion and from, from reading the literature is that I need to balance the challenge of the assessment and the provided materials to not make it too easy for students to obtain high marks to basically distinguish between the students. Then increase the active learning in lectures. That's part of the teaching observation and part of my action research project. I plan to do an assessment evaluation with students to see whether the expectations and authenticity of the assessments that I'm creating really helps them or makes it more interesting for them. And then um, I also want to investigate how to efficiently deliver feedback to large cohorts. And uh, in general, for the continued professional development, I'm actively checking, of course, my module reports. And, and I'm also running surveys during the lectures with students to get early feedback, um, especially for the new de newly developed modules. And I'm also 
observing the field for specific literature on teaching in computer science, I find that quite quite interesting what other people in other universities are are doing.